There we go, it's right up there. Look at that, it's poking out the top of the trees. Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. Today, we're gonna to be putting up a Meshtastic node. So if you don't already know, in the UK, we're actually doing a bit of an experiment at the moment, switching to medium fast, as per recommendation of the developers of Meshtastic, just to see if we can improve data throughput a bit. Um, going to medium fast is gonna help, hopefully, where it does increase the bandwidth, um, it increases the speed that data can travel in the very small space of the spectrum that we've got to use Meshtastic. And we've got a few bits that I've kind of scrabbled together from earlier projects, including this Paradar omnidirectional antenna. This is what I'm gonna use. So at the moment, I've got no antennas up outside. I'm literally using a loft-mounted Yagi, which is pointing towards um, Axle F station. I don't know if you know this station in the UK, but it's a very, very good one up a water tower, I believe, um, that covers quite a good area but he hasn't actually or he she whoever it is hasn't actually updated their their uh, node to medium fast yet so anyway to increase the sort of visibility of stuff and try and get things moving a bit faster i'm actually going to put up another outdoor system but i'm actually going to use something different this time this is actually our tree um <laughs> so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to put a pole through the center of this tree and then put the antenna right at the top i've already put the pole in there so i don't know if you can see this i can't even see because it it's so bright yeah you can see you can see it here so it literally is fully extended right now so it means that right at the top of this pole here when i put that omnidirectional up the top it should just poke out the top clearly it doesn't matter if there's a few you know branches around it anyway it should still work so that's the plan um, and we're going to use a raspberry pi pico because i've got loads of them um, with the wave share board uh, these are really really low power they're pretty much nearly as nearly as good as the rack stuff um, for power consumption i'm going to run it off a big battery down a wire and put it down the bottom underneath the tree in a waterproof box and then that'll hopefully just power that for as long as possible and then i, could, I don't have to bring the whole lot down each time um, good thing about the raspberry pi picos they've got wi-fi on board i mean most of the nodes have but um, the picos don't have bluetooth they have um, wi-fi so i'm going to use that it will connect to this the wi-fi network this has well i hope it will um, from here and then i can configure it and do things that way so here's the pico i'm going to use it's already plugged into the computer it's got the wave share uh, board on the back. I really like these little nodes. They're just no nonsense and they just work really well. So I'm on the Meshtastic Flasher um, website, which is kind of changed a little bit since I did a lot of the early stuff. Um, so I'm out of breath because I just ran up the stairs. But um, yeah, so you can see here we've got Raspberry Pi down here. I want to select the Raspberry Pi Pico W. We're going to do that and then select the firmware version, which I'm going to use the stable beta. Um, I've gone off of using the Alphas because I had crashes with Picos early on. Never since then, I just kind of just left it as the beta. So then we're going to do that. Hit flash. Obviously, it's not going to flash the board because um, what it, you have to do with the Picos is download the UF2 file, which is just like a firmware file. Um, so I'm just going to do that. See there, it's downloaded that. Unlock Freestyle is something for my drone. When you plug in the Pico and you want to update the firmware, it's really simple. You just hold that boot button down um, and then plug in the USB cable and then it appears as a drive on the computer. Raspberry Pi RP2. And then all you do is you literally drag that firmware file onto the Pi and that's it. I love how simple that actually is. And it's the same for the like T Echoes and stuff like that. So we get that firmware file, drop it on there and that should do its bit. I always, I'm always amazed at like how long this actually takes to copy, um, but you know, I don't know. It just, it just does it eventually. Right. So that's done. I'm going to unplug it. Obviously, this isn't configured at all. There's no antenna connected to it. You don't really want to be configuring without an antenna. Um, but there's not going to be no RF because this will be like in an unset mode anyway. So let's get an antenna connected just so we can set it up. So I'm using one of these common squiggly little antennas that you get from um, for the Heltex. These are actually quite good antennas actually because I think they're, they're helical so they kind of pull in signals from different angles because obviously your node isn't always going to be um, you know at, at the upright like that in a vertical way. It might be that way in your pocket or something like that and these antennas do actually work quite well. So let's get connected to this 
Um, I won't go into that because you probably know how to do that already. So we're in the client.meshtastic.org page and you can basically connect to the node over its USB serial. Nothing crazy, but it just works. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this one to client, um, not repeater or anything like that, even though it's going to be in a very good position up here. Um, I'm very, very high up over this way. So then we're going to go to the lower settings here. Um, it is actually already in... EU868. I think when you when you flash the firmware, it doesn't actually completely um, erase everything. It keeps keeps your basic settings, doesn't it? So um, then we're going to go down to here, and I'm going to set medium fast. <laughs> Controversial. This is it. Everything else remains the same. Um, I think we've got duty cycle already. That's enabled. So yeah, we want to keep that. And then yeah, that's basically it for that. Going to hit save there, get that saved in. I'm going to change the node name to Hartford Omni and do H002. This is my sort of numbering scheme for my nodes. And then I'm going to hit save on that as well, get that restarted. So finally, I'm going to enable Wi Fi config and I'm actually going to get it to connect to my phone's hotspot um, so that if it doesn't have range of the house, then I'll, I'll be able to still do it with my phone just from standing beneath the tree. And to be honest, I don't really use the Wi Fi config in anyway. Um, in you know, on my own network, I generally just like to use the phone app anyway. So we're going to do that and um, I'll test this out on the phone. To the phone, I've got my mobile hotspot turned on. We can see Meshtastic 3E27 there. That's connected. So that's all good. Um, can we actually see the IP address? Yeah, we can. So 192.168.147.143. Maybe the Meshtastic app will recognise this. I don't know. No, I don't think it's going to. So I need to put the IP address in and connect that. Let's see what's happening. There you go. So that's done. Harvard Omni and now what I'm going to do because this is going to get a little bit confusing we've got so many nodes in here so I'm going to go into the settings and I'm going to node db reset do that get that done wait for that to reboot all right I'm just going to cycle the power again just to get it to see if it will connect automatically it doesn't seem to be see the wi-fi is actually a little bit more quirky than the bluetooth um but it's now connected, it says, by the looks of things. So we should be able to go onto the, the list. Okay, so we've got Hartford Omni, Raspberry Pi Pico, things looking good. We've got um, the GPS position, and we've also got my other node here as well. Um, so that's my other home node there, which is a Yagi pointing, that's in the loft pointing somewhere else. So, okay, let me just ping the my other station, just make sure I've got a good connection Hartford Omni to Hartford we've moved to medium fast cool right, so next thing I'm going to do is what I always do with all my nodes I check the power output to make sure they're putting out the you know the, the right amount of power um, as per the settings obviously you're going to get a bit of attenuation through this sort of setup here but I'm using one of these um, RF meters they're so good and they do 868 they do 433 they do 2.4 gig 5.8 they do loads of stuff so um, go check them out they're quite hard to get hold of though um, so yeah I'm going to plug this in so that's plugged that's plugged into the power and we're just going to sit and watch this for a minute and just make sure it goes up to around about a hundred and something milliwatts when it does its first beacon okay sort of did something briefly then but i don't know what there you go 157 so that's actually a really healthy node that one 157 milliwatts these wave shed boards really kick out some power you know right apologies for the noise out here so this is the antenna i'm going to use i'm going to use this sort of project box to put the pico in um which has got power and you can see here I've got some wire which is going to go off to a battery. Now this Pico is obviously going to be connected to the antenna via a little patch lead from the IPEX going through the waterproof enclosure here and I've got like loads of self amalgamating tape around there to a um, N type male, female, I think it's male, um, basically which will connect onto this antenna. So what I want to do, I want to test and make sure because this box has been outside a little while, um, I want to make sure that this whole kind of the integrity of this is good and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a nano VNA with a little adapter um, here which allows you to plug an IPEX 
um, connector on the top of that. So that will then allow me to see exactly what the Pico is going to be seeing, um, you know, as an antenna. And then we can see whether it's actually working or not. Because last thing I want to do is go and put it all up and then realise that it doesn't, it's not working and then you have to kind of go backwards. So it's kind of one of the steps I always do with all this stuff, just test it all first and make sure it's all working. So I'm going to get it hooked up. Okay, so this is always a little bit tricky to set up because you've got to kind of, you know, this is really fiddly with all these little connectors. So, so anyway, I've connected it all up and you can see here we've got an SWR of 1.25 or 1.26 at 870 and this pattern for this antenna actually kind of looks it looks about right all i'm really bothered about is whether the connectors are balls or not and um, they're not by the looks of things so we, we look like we're good to go um obviously if you want to measure this properly then you really need this antenna in free space any th anything that it's touching is going to affect that swr but i know that these antennas are generally really good so 1.2 you know that is absolutely fine outside next thing i'm going to do is wrap up this connector weather seal it with self amalgamating tape it's amazing stuff you just basically just go around like inch of that and tape it doesn't really stick until it touches itself and then it just forms like this kind of crazy waterproof bond um well it's not crazy but it's just it's a waterproof bond so next up what i've done is i've secured the little pico um with its antenna connector to make sure that it doesn't come off just in the top of this so that when you're moving this around it doesn't you know put stress on the antenna connector um, and then that can just be closed up with that all we've got to do is basically connect up the um, the power lead there connect that onto the little header there and that will be good to go and then aside from that all i've got to do really is just mount this onto the pole i will have to put a connector on here uh, for one of my one cell batteries that i've got right so here's my battery i believe this is a 30 amp hour battery um i can't remember i think it's made out of 5000 milliamp hour cells yeah it is um some tesla cells that i had knocking around so six of those um in parallel um, which is yeah about 30 amp hours so that's pretty big um, and what I've done is obviously put this in a waterproof enclosure um, and I'm now going to connect up the the power to the node um, by using one of these XT30 connectors so I've already got that side on there just need to solder them on that side and then we'll have a long run down to the down to the bottom of the mast so basically this will go on the top with the antenna so you've got a really short coax run to the antenna and then the battery will go down the bottom and i can easily change the battery when i need to okay so it's all wired up tested you can just about see the led there reflecting inside um so i'm just going to leave this running i'm going to close this up leave this running for a little while and just make sure you know everything's kind of working as it should be just try pinging it a few times and stuff like that put this antenna up a little bit somewhere um just and see if it picks anything up just on the ground and then i'll i'll work Work out the pole situation right let's get this on the pole then pretty straightforward it's been on this pole before so all the brackets are all sorted already there we go guys it's installed on the pole all i've got to do now is put it in the tree right guys <laughs> there we go it's right up there look at that it's poking out the top of the trees might get a drone up actually to have a look at it it looks like we've got our first message as well on medium fast typo look how quick the ticks go on medium fast so i've got yeah i've got neil here as well i've got neil in two ways i've got his base station and his and his uh his home node so that's kind of what i wanted actually because palmer road is a really good link for a lot of people because um, he's in quite a high position as well. So now that we've got a link, that's that's pretty good. So looking good so far. Hopefully this node will help the area a little bit and get things sort of moving along on the medium fast side of things. Um, not everybody's kind of moved over yet, so if you haven't changed over, go over for the experiment. If it doesn't work, we'll end up, you know, I don't know what we're going to do, but we'll, <laughs> we might we might go back. Who knows? But I think right now we just need to sort of give it a chance and just sort of see, you know, how things kind of um, develop with this because it is going to take a bit of time for everyone to kind of get over to medium fast. But um, so far, so good on this side anyway. And um, yeah, let me know how you're going in the comments and also on the Discord. All the links and stuff are below. And I'll catch you next time. Happy meshing. Thank you.